G'day everybody. Welcome to At Home with Quest. Oh, sorry, Quest Connect Sunday. Quest Connect, first Sunday of the month. Gorgeous to be with you here today. My name's Bernadette and uh, today we're going to talk about memories, a bit about how memories are made in the brain, but also what is interesting is that we can learn the ability to colour our memories and direct them into a kind of, give them a positive flavour. So that's what I want to talk about with you today. So um, I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable and well. Uh, I've just had a big thunderstorm where I am in Wollongong, so that's why I'm a little bit late because the thunderstorm affects my internet reception. <laughs> so I'm over at a friend's place now so that I can be with you live without any kind of um, interruption. So lovely to be with you. I can see a few of you there. As always, just a joy. So as promised, we're going to talk about the brain, but of course we're going to begin with a meditation practice. And in, um, in the science of, in, in neuroscience speak, what they say about our brains, and I think what we really know, what our experience is, is that our brains are like um, Teflon for the good and like Velcro for the bad, right? We're always holding on to and focusing on the negative, what's a threat, what's not working. So we're going to look at what, um, what we might be able to do to change that today. So hello, 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 hello. Gorgeous to be with you. So I hope that sounds interesting. And um, yeah, there's a lot to say about that. But we will start with a little meditation practice, as always. And this is a practice where um, I'm going to make four or five suggestions. And these suggestions are um, ways to orient the brain to something a little more positive, um, to orient our experience over time to be something a little more positive, which is kind of what we want given that we're all living in this era of heightened anxiety heightened uh, tension every headline that I'm seeing has the word crisis in it there's a crisis everywhere so um, I am hoping that you are getting me Felice you're getting me on your iPhone but not the iPad I'm not sure what's going on there I'm on an iPhone uh, not my computer but hopefully um, you're getting me loud and clear so let's let's begin as we like to do here at quest with a meditation so i invite you wherever you are to settle yourself and become a tiny bit more comfortable whatever posture works for you if you want to lie down that's fine just let yourself be balanced if you're seated Thank you, Glenn. Good to know. If you're seated, then let yourself have a posture of dignity, a kind of regal sense. I'm feeling as I'm seated that my feet are on the floor. I can feel my buttocks against the cushion. And we welcome ourselves because we're a human being worthy of taking time with a right to be here and to do this for ourselves and for each other. So let your eyes gently close if that feels right to you. Slightly open if that's better for you. Feel that your face is soft. If you like, you can let your tongue just be behind the upper front teeth. That's a way of softening the internal structures in the mouth. And as you sit here, noticing the body, just also notice the breath. Can you feel that swirl of air inside the nostrils? Maybe a little bit of movement of air just above 
the upper lip. Can you feel the rise and fall of your belly or your chest? And just let your awareness be very lightly resting on the breath. Well, I make some suggestions. So the first suggestion is that it can be very helpful to set an intention for this meditation, for this time together. Maybe with words, maybe wordlessly, but it can be helpful to set an intention. And a second suggestion is to relax your body a little more. So maybe that's just by allowing a bigger inhalation, an exhalation, or just imagining that tension is draining out of your body. And the third suggestion is that you aim to feel a sense of safety, as much safety as you can. It might be a sense that you're in a protected setting, your own room, or a sense of being in this good company that we're all in right here now. Could be a sense of being strong in yourself or well-intentioned. Or a sense of being able just for a moment to relax that vigilance. So we've set an intention. We endeavour to relax the body a little. We endeavour to bring a sense of safety or feeling safer, right? And now see if you can bring to mind some positive feeling. Just a mild one, a gentle one. Perhaps a sense of peacefulness or just a pause, maybe a sense of gratitude for the good things in your life. If we have a roof over our head and an internet connection, that's a good thing. Maybe whatever you choose is fine, might be a sense of happiness. And the last suggestion is that could we have a sense of letting the benefit of this meditation soak in? Could we have a sense of the benefit here sinking in? That this time, this pause, these moments have been nurturing us, have been helping us, and are just gently inclining the mind to feeling a little more positive. To incline the mind to a more helpful, more wholesome direction. So now, just for a few minutes more, could we be here with a sense of feeling each individual breath. Just this breath. And 
no hurry. Just feel each breath, be present to each breath from the beginning, through the middle, to the end. Feeling that each breath is a fresh breath. Feel that you're receiving each breath fully in your awareness, however the breath is. Just a few moments of forgetting everything else and just becoming right here now more absorbed in the breath. And then notice how you feel right here now. When you feel ready in your own good time, just gently take a few moments to notice how you feel and also begin to bring maybe a little bit of movement into your body, maybe in your hands or your fingers. in your feet or your toes. Maybe just moving your body a little bit. And sensing how that is for you. And when you're ready, welcome back. I'd love you to share with me how you feel, what you noticed about that. We sat for a few minutes and it can just be remarkable how our body feels different, how our um, mind feels different, how our emotions might settle just after those few moments. So the, it's like the immaterial mental activity actually has an effect on the material, on the material body. And we're, you know, we're engaging neurological activity with all of those suggestions, the setting of the intention, the relaxing of the body, the bringing to mind something good to letting it kind of soak in. Lovely to connect with a warm sense of love and gratitude behind everything. Yeah, thank you, Diana. And thanks, Maria. Love to hear that you feel a bit more relaxed. So the fundamental point of today is, because I get a bit sidetracked, there's so much to talk about, but I have some notes here. Thank you, Kerry. Love that. Um, the fundamental thing behind, um, you know, is that we can target in really specific, specific ways um, how we can manage our brain. Thank you. Feeling grounded. Thank you, Belinda. So we can, we can foster really powerful changes in our brain with really specific things. And that can benefit ourselves, our whole being, and of course, everybody else that we come in contact with. So given that uh, this coming up soon, it's um, Kindness Day or Kindness Awareness Week. It's also Remembrance Day on the 11th. And in my mind, those two kind of went together. And it's like, how can we, because I know that what I remember mostly is a negative, And I'm sure you do. As I said at the start, the brain is like Teflon for the good. 
the good just goes off but velcro for the bad right so what is it about how we remember things and how might we influence our, our the way that the mind remembers and, and stores things and m incline the mind in a more positive direction that i'm interested in and given that we can do that and have very powerful effects on the material um, neurological activity in the brain we can change the structures of the brain uh, that for me is doing great kindness to ourselves and of course to others so the rationale behind those five and this what I'm talking about today comes from the work of Rick Hansen um, he is just one of my faves perennial favorite uh, researcher and psychologist and uh, neurobiologist and uh, I just love his work so this comes from that um, so the five um, the background of those five suggestions the first thing about setting an intention can be a really good way of bringing on the frontal lobes of the brain switching them on and giving really good orienting and priming messages to the brain so you kind of um, establishing a goal which is really good for the brain good for the whole organism right the second to relax the body and I always say can I relax five percent more <sighs> sometimes just a breath is all it takes but to relax the body activates the parasympathetic nervous system and you know you've heard us all bang on about this before but that is a soothing and a calming antidote to the fight flight adrenaline charged wing of the nervous system and given that we're all living in the time of crisis it's really important to come back to relaxing the body and it's as simple as a breath or a sense of an intention to relax the body so the third suggestion and you can do these on the fly you know you can do these not just when you're sitting in a meditation but in the middle of your daily life the third suggestion was to call up or to conjure up a greater sense of safety to whatever extent that you can right and that calms the kind of evolution based tendency of the brain to continually scan the horizon for threat and to get activated at the least sign of threat so and you know there are threats that come from the body as well when we have pain when we have discomfort um, when we have terrifying thoughts in the mind these are internal threats so you know when you think about the tradition of yoga and buddhism and meditation people went to meditate and they sat with their back against a tree or at the base of a mountain you know so nature something bigger than them had their back because we always want to conjure up that sense of feeling safer um, so you know vigilance helps us but it is also can be very very stressful and detrimental to our health so notice that we said feel safer not feel safe because most of us don't we're living in an age where we don't feel safe we don't feel very protected or looked after and of course in the bigger perspective none of us are safe from illness old age and death sorry to <laughs> bring the tone down but to have a conjure up a sense of feeling safer is helpful okay um, the fourth suggestion to conjure up a sense of a positive emotion this is really of course it feels good it's pleasurable but it's worth doing and so it's worth doing for that reason but positive emotions have really important physical mental emotional effects on us build resilience psychologically strengthen our immune system but they also motivate us to practice with a little bit more kindness um, towards ourselves and that's something we really generally most of us need to cultivate and it can be energizing to just bring to mind a sense of the positive right uh, what else do they say um, bringing to mind positive uh, emotions encourages 
a, a neurotransmitter called neuropinephrine, I think it's pronounced, and that brightens the mind. It gives the mind a, a bright kind of tone. So we like that. And the last suggestion to kind of let it soak in, to take in the benefits, to absorb the benefits of your practice, primes the memory circuits in the brain. And this is where we're going to talk about memory a bit. So particularly the um, memory circuits that are called implicit memory. Um, that's not the memory of specific things. That's kind of more explicit memory. But implicit memory is sort of the emotional tone of the brain, the, the, the tone that colours our thoughts. So when we finish by bringing something positive to mind, gratitude, appreciation, whatever it is, and then imagining all the benefits of everything we've just done soaking in, it kind of helps us compensate for that negativity bias in the brain. You know, that's evolution's adaptation to help us survive, but it makes us suffer as well. So the result of all of those suggestions, and as I said, they come from the work of Rick Hansen, is um, shifting things in the mind. That's one thing, in small and subtle ways. And that changes our nervous system and our body very dramatically, actually. And that leads to mental changes, which lead to physical changes, which in turn create positive mental states. So it's a wonderful circle of opportunity. You change your mind to change your brain to change your mind, which changes your body, which changes your mind. Okay? So how's that sounding? Hope that's interesting for you. If you need to um, have a little movement at any time, I'm a big fan of um, from time to time just moving the body because it's a lot of talking, a lot of information. And if you've got any questions, I'd love them. Uh, I might not have the answers, but I'd certainly love your engagement. Um, but what I want to talk about now is a practice that uh, Rick Hansen calls taking in the good. Given that our memories and our mind has a tendency to focus on the negative, this is a practice of taking in the good. And we'll do that practice ourselves. There's kind of four steps. Um, so, and the then the premise of this is that most of what we are, who we are, ourself, our idea of ourselves, is built up from our memories, from what we remember. That kind of slow accumulation of memories that becomes who we are. And as I said, two kinds of memories, explicit and implicit. Explicit is um, about specific events, you know, where you were on your 21st birthday, that time you had a car accident. Uh, but implicit memory is about your emotions. That's about our the ways that we relate to each other. Um, it's different from the outside kind of events and ideas. It's that implicit memory is about your gut, sense of things it's more a visceral embodied memory it's in the early kind of mammalian structures in the brain and most memory is implicit right so it's we can think of it as the atmosphere of the mind that's a good way of thinking of it um yeah so the atmosphere of the mind um do i want to say anything about that no so the question here, how can we make our implicit memories as good as possible? And the way that we do it is to consciously and deliberately help the brain to register positive experiences. Okay, so we deliberately consciously do that and it helps it starts to shift the emotional landscape of the brain into a more positive direction it helps to us to develop more positive expectations that things are going to go well in the future it helps to develop our optimism um, and it has a lot of physical benefits 
um, and we build up resources inside ourselves. So it's not about making up a rose-coloured story or flattering ourselves, but it's just, you know, tilting, inclining the mind to something positive. You know, if you think of your life or your mind or any experience as like a jigsaw with a thousand pieces, and, you know, 800 of those pieces might be perfect, but there's a few that are not quite perfect, and that is what we tend to focus on, right? And a lot of us have a great deal of resistance to taking in the good, to savouring positive experiences. We're not good at that. We can't hang out with it. We, we don't even notice it. We're on to looking for the next thing. So we don't know how to let positive experiences sink in and become part of our implicit memory. So we're going to do a, a meditation practice um, so there's four steps here and the lots of studies kind of talk about um, the more vivid something is, the more we remember it. You know, Patria talks about shock gets embedded very deeply in the brain because it's quite vivid and it gets very deeply um, embedded. So we're going to make our um, experience, we're going to find ways to heighten our experience so we improve our recall of positive experiences. Uh, just check this message from Deborah. Do you feel our strong childhood memories set our brain patterns, especially when we can't forget some traumatic memories? Um, short answer, yes, and it's not the whole story. So I'll come back to that, Deborah. We can. This is where we're talking. We can, over time, incline our mind and incline those memories to a positive direction. So we'll do the experience and then you might be a bit clearer on that. Um, okay, so let me just make sure I've got some notes. I want to stay on track here. So we want to change, Deborah and all of us, those traumatic memories that go in early, they actually change neural structures in the brain but we can do that ourselves too. So regardless of what's happened to us, we can influence the brain. So one way of doing it is not focusing on the trauma, but on focusing on uh, positive experiences. So here's a few suggestions for Deborah and everyone. The first one is um, help positive events become positive experiences. Okay, so lots of ways to do that, but one way is just to pay more attention to the good in the world and the good inside yourself. So very often good things just kind of roll on by and we're on to the next thing. We hardly clock it. We hardly notice it. Um, you know, so we get a bit robotic about our life. So it could be that you set a goal each day or several times throughout the day to actively look for beauty in the world uh, or actively look for signs that you are cared about or actively look for good qualities in yourself right here now. So this is one way um, and that helps events become experiences. So we just decide to feel more pleasure. We just decide to do that rather than to feel guilty about it. Um, paying attention is, it helps us open up more physically, more emotionally to the good things. Um, yeah, and another way is to just deliberately bring to mind positive experiences. Deliberately bring to mind feelings of compassion or caring about something or something that you could do for another person uh, or a time or a place where you were happy. Just deliberately bringing that to mind. Yeah, just decide. We're generally on such automatic pilot, aren't we? I mean, I was walking on the beach the other day and I saw dolphins. And actually, a few days before that, I saw whales. And you know, I stopped and I took it in and I, with the dolphins, I really made an effort to stop and take it in and to 
feel the sense of joy and appreciation in my body because the week before when I saw the whales, it was raining. I was walking in the rain. It was really windy, but there were whales out there. And I was kind of just like, oh, yeah, whales. You know, isn't that great? Isn't that great? But I was so kind of in the experience of being rained on and, and wind that I didn't, couldn't take in. It was too much happening, I guess. But afterwards, when I was telling a friend, they were blown away that I'd seen whales. And I thought, yeah, I didn't really actually take that in. I didn't savour it. I didn't let it sink in. So, so deliberately uh, calling to mind, making a goal, look for beauty every day. Um, so another suggestions, another suggestion, step two, once you've got that experience, that lovely memory, that idea of being, you know, cared about or an, or an idea of it, um, you've kind of caught it in your net, then you want to extend the experience a bit. Rick Hansen says you extend it in time and space and you keep your attention on it so that it lingers. You don't just jump onto something else. So, and you might have to notice any discomfort of staying with a good feeling. Um, and the idea here is that working memory, never forgot a pot of dolphins a couple of years ago. Yeah, Glenn. Walking in all the gardens are so amazing. Exactly. And you can conjure that up even when you're at your computer. You can remember the walking and the beauty of the gardens. Um, so with the memories, right, we're talking about memories here, you know, the memory of the dolphins or the memory of the gardens or whatever, working memory is a bit limited. It's just a bit like a piece of paper, right? It, um, it holds that information. But when new stuff comes in, that stuff gets knocked off because the new stuff is there. So the positive experience that we're trying to help sink in we need to do that by letting it linger a little bit more, giving it a bit more attention. And that in itself is a mindfulness practice. So that's uh, giving it more time and giving it more space is letting yourself feel that in your body. So when you are looking at the gardens on your walk, it's just like where can you feel it in the body? Let it fill your body. Take in those positive feelings, those emotions, relish it and savour it. That's what we want to do. Um, here's another one for you. Uh, another step is that you can sense, so you relish it, like you, you notice it, you make it linger, you expand it in time and space, and then you imagine it soaking in into the brain and the body, like I like to imagine it soaking into my chest and into my back, into my torso, because I hold a lot of tension in my shoulders. So I love to imagine that it's soaking in to my brain and into my body too. So, and that helps it get registered as a really deep memory. So there's different ways you can do it. Yeah, I like the chest and the back. You might you know, imagine it soaking into your heart like a, you know, treasure chest there or, you know, colouring the brain, whatever way you do it. But you sink into it and you give it a bit of time, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and you keep relaxing your body into it to absorb it. And that's how the neurons keep firing together and wiring new positive experiences in the brain. Yeah. Um, and what's the fourth step? Yeah, this is interesting. I was doing this this morning. I practiced it. I practice before I preach. Okay, so um, here's the fourth step. Is that you can use, we can use some of those new positive experiences to go down into where some old wounds might be. And this speaks to your question earlier. Um, was it Deborah? Yeah. So this speaks to what you asked Deborah about the trauma of the old stuff. If you, 
if we bring the positive experience in and we imagine it going down to the hurt places, soothing those old places and kind of replacing them or colouring them over time with more positive views and positive feelings, um, it's a kind of really targeted medicine. It's a targeted antidote to those old feelings of whatever it is, feeling inadequate, feeling unloved, feeling hurt, traumatised, whatever. So the current feelings of taking in beauty, of feeling cared about, of gratitude, they're not replacing the old feelings of um, being rejected or abandoned or whatever, of being lonely. But the current sense of our strength colours and helps to heal the old memories. So it's like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this practice, and I think it'll make a bit more sense. Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to say. Any more questions? Good, good, good. So, yeah, it's pretty simple, really. All that we need to do is to have the new positive experience in the foreground. And at the same time, we're going to do this, is bring up an old, maybe painful memory, but something mild to moderate, not your most traumatic memory, not to start with. And you have a sort of dim sense of a background sense of the mild to moderate painful memory with the current positive memory in the foreground, right? We won't forget that those events happened and we're not trying to falsify memory, we're not trying to replace history or make anything up. We're just the painful associations from the past, we, we get to unhook it a little bit. And Rick Hansen, long-time practising psychologist, says that this is one of the most powerful ways that he knows to authentically kind of change your brain and yourself from the inside out, genuinely over time. So, and you can do that um, on the fly. You can do it before going to bed. You can do it on the fly during the day. It's like we're just dropping positive experience into, you know, whatever painful experiences we've had in the past. And so I think we should do this meditation together. So we're going to practice with all these steps and uh, you'll get a sense of it. So. Any, any thoughts, any questions? Okay, we're good to go. So, as with any practice, you can find some, you know, maybe just adjust your position a little bit more so you're a tiny bit more comfortable. And bring your awareness into your body. You might be relaxing with your eyes open, but it can be restful to close your eyes. So, all that we've just talked about, we're putting into practice right here now. So I'd invite you to call to mind Anything that gives you a positive feeling, a good feeling. Maybe it's something in your immediate environment. It could be your pet, picture of a child, the sound of children laughing, the gardens, the dolphins, whatever it is. It could be a memory or it could be an idea. Anything that gives you a positive experience. It doesn't need to be a big deal. And it's perfectly all right whatever uh, you bring to mind. And even if that, uh, that feeling comes and goes a bit, that's fine. We're, it's simply the intention to activate, to have a positive experience 
will activate neural circuitry. So even the intention of bringing to mind something positive as you're doing now is informing and wiring beneficial structures in the brain. So that's our first step. Have a positive experience. So now let's expand this in time and space. In other words, try and savour it. So just explore the nuances, the different nice qualities of this positive experience. See if you can extend it in, in the sense of it. You might feel your body might be sensing it. You might be breathing it in. Could you have a sense that it's filling your body, that you're letting it sink in? Can it soak in? Can it fill your body? Can it colour the cells? Maybe you could give it a colour. And we're going to imagine that this now is soaking into, this positive experience is soaking in to your brain and your body. And you're registering it deeply. It's soaking in to all of your emotional memory stores. You might feel it sinking into your chest or into your back or your shoulders or into your heart or soaking into your brain. Or you might just have a sense that it's shifting, sifting slowly down deeply into the layers of your mind. And this fourth step, you're going to get a sense Bring to your awareness something mildly difficult or something mildly painful. It could be a memory, could be an experience you had as a child, but a mild to moderate experience. And get a sense of it, maybe where it's located in the body. And then with each breath, just feel that we can reimagine this. Have a sense of this new positive experience sinking into any of the painful, inflamed spaces in our heart in our memories. Can we have a sense of the positive experience of today? Nourishing that little part of us deep inside, that painful part that's inside all of us. If there's a painful memory, could you bring to mind what you should have received when you were 
when this when you were younger maybe that you just didn't or couldn't have had and could you today give that hurt part of you what he or she really needed can you get a sense that there's care now there's compassion now and that you can carry forward from this point you can carry forward the benefits of this new positive experience touching coloring and healing old painful experiences and that is benefiting yourself and as you benefit yourself in various ways it benefits all others that we come into contact with so feel this new positive experience sinking in coloring all any painful parts and feel yourself benefiting and imagine the benefits flowing out Feel this positive experience becoming a deep and enduring and fundamental part of yourself. And then gently start to breathe a little more fully. Invite a deeper breath. Invite a little movement. Noticing how you feel. What has been the effect of that practice? So I'd like to hear from you how that was. Um, I hope that made sense for you. Uh, I'll share with you how I practiced with that today. Um, it was cultivating, you know, bringing to mind a positive experience. And so I brought to mind a sense of floating in the ocean, which I did a couple of days ago. Just that beautiful joyful sense and I really felt that physically and breathed it in and had it very present and up in my awareness and then I practiced just let the first memory come I brought to mind a mild to moderate old painful memory and it was a time of um, when I was in primary school I don't even know how um, but I was uh, doing a play it was meant to actually be the sun for a play but of course I never told my mum so I never had time for the costume didn't have a yellow t-shirt didn't have anything and I did not feel like the sun at all and I was meant to walk on and be the sun and of course I absolutely froze I was already feeling less than because I had the wrong color t-shirt on I didn't know exactly what to do and I was terrified, stage fright. So it's a horrible memory, <laughs> but I brought that one to mind. With this current positive felt experience of something joyful, I brought that kind of painful experience and I just let the positive experience kind of color and hold that painful experience and I just felt myself giving what that younger part of me needed which was oh a bit of compassion and a bit of encouragement and I just imagined her thriving and having what she needed and you know just let those two things be there together 
And then I had an intention, yeah, okay, I'm going to let some of this positive colour that painful negative experience. And honestly, it's not that I changed that experience, but, you know, I imagined that little girl in her yellow T-shirt with her rays of the sun and doing exactly what she was meant to do and feeling good about it. Now, that isn't a true memory, but it has changed an old pattern because that old memory brings to mind a sense of not feeling good enough, being ill-prepared, parents not caring and getting it right. You know, it's a painful feeling fearful a frozen part but when I've reimagined it and colored it a little it's kind of okay it doesn't sting as much it doesn't have that bite uh, that memory has no sting anymore so that's the message really is that we're just inclining over time our mind and our memories into a more positive experience because our memories are not true anyway we don't just kind of get them from a file like you do on a computer. We, the brain remakes them every time. So a lot of our memories are not even true. We kind of colour them all the time. So I hope that's been helpful. I'm just going to check in with some of your messages. So I love that, Maria. Imagine being hugged lovingly. And Ralph, thank you. Using, I love that. I really hope it helps. And I'd love to hear, Ralph, if that's useful for you. It's like colouring old black and white photos. What a beautiful analogy. Thank you. These are brilliant comments. Um, Diana, I'm just trying to read more of what you said there. To give yourself permission um, when you're upset by someone else. You can't change them, but you give yourself what you need at the time. Absolutely. Yeah, we want to suffuse it. And, you know, this is really a it's all about being more mindful, isn't it? And being more curious about our life. Just checking in with your other message there. Using a joyful, positive experience to colour over. Um, it's not colour over, it's to colour. It's not to paper over, but to colour the negative experience. Um, yeah, it is finding balance. And there's a beautiful poem by John O'Donoghue which says something like... Um, I want to live the way that a river flows, surprised by its own unfolding, something like that. And I really want to, uh, that's, that's how I think of this meditation, that, you know, we're not just bringing up the same old memories all the time and functioning in the same way, but we can kind of surprise ourselves with new ways of looking at the world and new ways of thinking and ways of actually having an impact on our own um, Neurology. I love that the immaterial thinking can change the material, you know, the circuitry of the brain. I just think it's fantastic. So, uh, massive relief off your chest. The smell of perfume roses. Oh, I love that, Belinda. Thank you. These are just great. Thank you so much for being with me. And here's one more thing I want to share with you. Today's challenge uh, of Patria's 30 Days of um, Health and Wellness, today's challenge is to find a song you like and to have a dance. So I'm definitely intending to do that today. haven't done it yet. haven't chosen the song. But if anyone's got any suggestions in these last few minutes, I'd love to know. So I would love it if some of you will make a commitment to do the same, to find a song and your favourite playlist and to have a dance. One song. Three minutes, little dance, like no one's watching. Is anyone out there going to do that? I'd love a little, you know, a wave if you're going to do that too. Deal, Fleetwood Mac, here you come. All right, yeah, I think Fleetwood Mac, I, I might go with you with that one, Belinda. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Womack and Womack, excellent. These are fabulous suggestions. I love that. I might go two songs. Excellent. Well, let's do that together. Let's have a dance this afternoon or tonight before we go to bed and just see what the effect has been, you know. And then maybe if we do that, um, that can be another one of those positive memories that we can bring to kind of colour the others. You've been to paradise. Thank you so much. I just love being with you. And it's been a great afternoon. I've really enjoyed sharing this. 
and I hope it's made sense. And uh, anything ABBA, yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Thank you, everyone. Let's go and have a dance and just remember um, that we're all doing this together and that can be part of our positive experience that we can influence our circuitry with. Okay. Thank you. Betty Grumbles Boogies. I don't know that, but I'm going to check that out, Diana. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.